Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon on my channel, never miss another update. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is DJ New back again in the studio. Uh, um, I have been getting a lot of requests uh, for FL Studio tutorials. Uh, but before we start FL Studio tutorials, let me tell you guys one thing that you know you should know at least the basics of uh, scales and chords. If you don't know about the basics of scales and chords, then it's pointless that you guys are actually using this software to produce uh, you know amazing tracks and music. So, uh, anyways, um, I'm going to start this uh, tutorial now. I'll show you the FL Studio DAW, which is known as Digital Audio Workstation, so uh, which you can actually purchase it from. Uh, imageline.com I know a lot of you guys are uh, you know cracking this software and using it but uh, I would really suggest you not to do that and you can buy this from imageline.com because they have put a lot of hard work into it producing this making this uh, coding it and you know there are many many big artists who are making good music from FL studio uh, well just let's just jump right into this this is the uh, arrangement window when we open FL Studio we get it and we have to know most about these tools and if you know about the arrangement window and get to know about the workaround area in this space it will be very easy for you to understand this tutorial alright as I said this is the arrangement window where we'll be arranging all the tracks all the instrumentations which we produce and make we'll be arranging it here uh, this tool area basically here you have the hint panel now as you can see as DJ Neo you can see that this is registered to me I bought this uh, completely the producer edition from imageland.com it's been almost uh, six to seven years I get my regular updates and uh, it's a life lifetime update actually what you keep getting and if you need more instrumentations VSTs you can actually purchase that later again but yes with the producer edition itself you can make amazing tracks if you have the oscillator if you have the synthesizer you can actually uh, sound design your own sound whatever you require now getting back to it uh, as you can see as I told you the hint panel is here so wherever you hover your mouse it actually shows you what is that button or the knob which we are hovering it and it shows you even the shortcut keys see Control M means for the metronome. This is the metronome. So if I put Control M, it's on and it's off. This one is for wait input start playing. We'll come over to this is the timeline. And uh, this one, as you can see, this is the bar and the timeline as well. This, if I press Control and uh, select this, it's uh, basically uh, what do you call a loop. I'm going to turn on my metronome, Control M and start playing it and once the loop finishes it goes back again to bar one there you go we will be working mostly on these areas these four this is the as I told you the arrangement window which, which usually I call it as arrangement window because I, I arrange my tracks here but it's also known as playlist as you can see over here it's known as arrangement and when you hover here it shows as view playlist the next one is the piano roll where we actually produce our chords and scales and melodies whatever then comes the channel rack where we load uh, different instrumentations here is one instrument so that's an instrument which is citrus or citrus however, however you pronounce it that's one instrument um, this is where you actually target mixer track you can see on the hint panel when I'm putting it here so you have to send the channel to a mixer channel so the next one is the mixer as you can see it shows my mixer channel so wherever I want to send my citrus or citrus sound I can send it to whatever track I am sending it to so when it shows five here it's going to insert five showing six here go to six then seven then eight so for whatever you want to do so yeah that's uh, much about the tutorial of this introduction then we'll be producing a lot of tracks on this I'll show you in this first tutorial how to actually load different instrumentations so first thing what we have to do is our sound design before we produce something and I want to 
I have an idea like what kind of instruments I want to use for this production which I'm going to do and what tempo I need for my track which I'm going to produce. So I have a 128 BPM which I have already set. If you want to set it to 130, whatever you want to make, you can put it to 130. I've set it up to 128 and I'm taking my um, channel rack where I have one sound here. I don't need the sampler because I actually took an empty project. So when you click file, you can see here, um, new from template, I took the empty project. There are different templates which FL Studio 20 has given you and you can work around easily along with that. But we are starting from scratch. So I took an empty project, that's why I got things like this. I don't need the sampler right now, I'm just gonna delete it because uh, I'm making my own sound. So I've taken the first sound on Citrus where I kind of like this sound, so I'll just keep it. Now I'll take one more instrument. Again, I'm going to make it on Citrus. And let me see. Over here, there's a drop down. And the Citrus has its own thousands of presets, which you can see here. Oh my God. You see that? Hundreds and hundreds of presets. And you can make your own presets if you want. I want to take a bass line where I'll take this DG. And let me check. So I took this DG as my baseline, and I'm going to send this to number two. And I'm going to change the color to rename and color region. So let's say I'm going to call this as base one. I'm going to change the color as I like my baseline color always to be red. Okay. So I got one base and one lead. So I'll change this. Sorry. I'll change this to rename to lead. So I got two instruments right now which I have loaded. And let me create something on, and I'll take one kick. Okay, so let me take, just to show you guys how it sounds like. Let's say one fruity kick. And I'll send this to three. And I'll rename it as normal kick and the color as green so let me after this we have to actually create patterns now here this is my pattern window so here as you can see on your left side as well so we have patterns so we have to make a pattern for what kind of uh, how are you going to organize that so I'm going to make rename this pattern as my intro kick and I'm going to keep it as the same color as green so I got my intro kick here I have not made any pattern yet so I'm going to go over my channel rack take my kick I'm on intro kick right now right click piano roll I can make my patterns here also but in this FL Studio actually started its old <coughs> production sorry about that on these things so you can actually design your kick here itself so I'm gonna play this now I like that now I have my intro kick pattern here I just gotta drag and drop it here see so I just dragged and dropped my intro kick pattern here and I have these toolbars where I can have my snap to grade with bar beat whatever it is my pencil tool to draw or the paint tool. I'm gonna to take my pencil tool. I'm gonna to make three, four. So left click is to paste, right click is to delete that pattern. So left click, left click, left click. And double click here to activate your timeline. So I got my first track as a kick. Right click, rename. I'll put this as uh, beat, say one and put it as one <coughs> because I have to change my beat later I'll be bringing in the hi-hats maybe the snares so maybe my beat 2 will come here so let me change that I'm not making anything right now just to show you guys how this arrangement works so I'm gonna make my beat 2 here maybe the color a little more lighter shade so that's my beat 2 I want to bring my bass line here bass as you remember we made bass 1 <sighs> color for base I'll take it as red yeah now 
I want to make a one baseline, so I'll just go to pattern two and rename that. Mm, rename to base one color to red. I have the selections which I selected previously. Take that, enter. Now open up my channel rack. I'm going to make a baseline now, but I cannot make it here. I don't want to make it here. I want to be more flexible with my scales and chords. So I'm going to open my piano roll. So let's say I'll make a normal on the lower octave. That's too low. Mm -hmm. Black C4. So let me say I'm going to make something on here. So there. 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 Like, let me turn on the metronome and play. So that's a normal one bar uh, bass line. See, I got my bass line now here. I'll just bring it down here and rub it, paste it, paste it, paste it. Double click that. Last one, I maybe change it to that. So you can play around with your bass line or whatever it is. Now that's on my pattern one. That's why whatever changes I do here, it affects there. So remember that. Anyways, this is just an introductory video, so I'm not going to. You know, before this, I would like to explain you about the chords and scales. For that, you have to go to my Logic Beats uh, video channel where I'm actually explaining it. So, below the link, I have given you the link uh, below this video uh, where you can go and learn about scales and chords and come back. If you don't have Logic Pro X, then that's why I am starting this with uh, FL Studio so you guys can understand how FL Studio works as well. Um, that's it, guys. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell button, like, subscribe, and comment, whatever it is. I'm here to help you guys and to learn from you as well. If you have any suggestions, comments, please do let me know, and I'm ready to um, learn from you as well. So uh, just wait for my next tutorial, which will be actually explaining how to make the entire song and the scales and chords, uh, using scales and chords, and how do we do our sound designing accordingly, and we'll move forward. Thank you for being here, and this is DJ Neo signing off, guys. See you later soon. Bye-bye.